Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Hitscan. Today I want to go over a lot of need to know information about Valorant that the game doesn't necessarily explain to you. Some of these might be kind of obvious but I'm sure there's some in this list that you may not even know about and they're all full of tips and tricks no matter what hero you want to play what guns you want to use, those kind of areas. The first one I want to go over is armor. Most people may think that they know how armor works based off what it says in game, but what it says in game is actually wrong. In a game, it says when you take damage, 50% of it hits the armor that you're holding and 50% hits your HP. When that actually isn't true at all. The devs said so themselves. They said that if you buy a shield, two thirds of incoming damage will be applied to the shield and one third will be applied to your health. Of course, there's situations where if you only have four armor, it will deplete the armor that you have left and then the rest of the damage will of course be taken to your normal HP. But I wanted to start with one that some people know about but because the game gives you misinformation I wanted to make sure that everybody at least knew that. When it comes to stuff hitting friendly fire is also a talking point. It's something that I've talked about already on this channel so I'll go over this one very quickly. There is no friendly fire in the normal matchmaking version of Valorant. We don't know if friendly fire would be in like a competitive version of the game like ranked but we'll have to wait and see on that. That's just speculation but you can damage friendly teammates with certain abilities stuff like molotovs and grenades your teammates take damage but they only take one third of the damage overall if you hit your teammate with an ability that usually does 150 damage they will take 50 instead they also get decayed they get flashed they get stunned so just be careful when you're using a lot of your utility that you don't end up team killing because that would obviously suck the next thing I wanted to go over is the noise that the diffuser makes when you try and diffuse the spike. Most of you know that as soon as you go to diffuse it makes this noise. Pretty straightforward stuff and most of you also know that you can half diffuse. Channeling the diffuse halfway will have it start again at this point instead of from the very beginning. The important thing that I wanted to highlight is when you go to diffuse a spike that's already half diffused, instead of making this noise, it makes this noise. So definitely train your ears to recognize this. If you hear a higher pitch ring when the diffuse starts to come in, that means that this person is very close to diffusing it and is more likely going to actually try and dedicate to it. It's not something you'll see frequently, but it might just win you a couple of rounds, maybe even a couple of games here or there. Next up is wall abilities, specifically for people that play Phoenix and Viper. Both of them have wall abilities that stop when they reach an object, for example, like I'm showing you on screen with Phoenix and Blaze. But one thing that not a lot of people know about with Phoenix is that you can fire it over terrain, over boxes and in certain areas, even if it's higher or lower than you are currently. It's very similar to Viper. I've been doing this quite a lot when I've been playing it, but I will recommend that you just try it out in custom games as it can be quite buggy over bits of terrain. Of course, the game is still in closed beta, so that's likely to happen, but I definitely recommend just going into a custom game and trying out stuff if you are in the game, of course, or at least going over to Reddit r slash Valorant Competitive as there's a nice amount of tips and tricks on where to place these abilities. There's also a lot of crazy smoke and grenade lineups as well, and that's because the skybox in this game is significantly high. It allows you to do some crazy across the map shots with stuff like recon bolts or certain smokes or certain mollies. So definitely try and learn the lineups if you can. This is an area where games like Counter-Strike can stop you from trying to do certain bits with having areas of the map that have a low skybox. But it seems for Valorant, it's consistently high. There's no areas where you throwing up an ability means it's good to bounce off an invisible wall and bounce back down. You could even fire the recon bolts or shock bolts up into the air. The people have been using in really unique situations to try and kill people at diffusing those kind of areas. There's a lot of cool UI pieces when it comes to playing in Valorant, but there are a couple in here that not many people know about, and I didn't actually know about some of these either. The first I wanted to highlight is the left alt button. Now this over your teammates shows what utility they have. If you open up the tab menu, the leaderboard, you can see their economy, the gun that they have, and even if their ultimate is ready, but you don't know if the raise has bought grenades, you don't know if the sage has a barrier orb ready. With this, you can see very easily 
who is what. It takes a while to sort of get used to it, but it's just a great way of being able to see what utility your teammates may have left in around where people aren't necessarily communicating. Speaking of communicating, you can press the comma button, which brings up a comms wheel that is very similar to Overwatch's, but a bit more fleshed out. Not only do you have the typical stuff of, I need support, I need help, yada yada, but you also have nice responses. Yes, no, thank you. And you can even call different strategies such as rushing the opponent or stay here. All of these are gonna be used people are already complaining about Valorant players being far too quiet so if for any reason you don't want to actually communicate with microphone this is a good thing to do instead and in a tactical shooter like Valorant that's certainly very important. I mentioned the tab menu before and the economy you will also notice that you can see the enemy's economy and I saw a lot of confusion about this. This is the enemy's economy at the start of a round so you don't know whether the enemy team have fully bought, they've forced or whether they've ecoed. You just have the information of how much money they were taking into that round, not necessarily how much money that they have now. You can't see what they buy, basically, if they buy at all. So I think that's really important to know. A lot of confusion of people thinking it's too strong to see the enemy team's economy. You get a glance at most which I find really useful to try and find out tactics of if they're ecoing or not, but we can talk about all that some other time. Sound is such an important aspect of Valorant as you could probably imagine. It's an area that overall separates the good from the great. It's common knowledge to know that if you're running on the map, if you're clumping around, you will have this circle on the minimap showing you the distance that your noise travels. Anybody within that circle will hear you stepping and will know roughly at least where you are. When you shift, walk or crouch, you obviously don't make any steps. Bringing out your knife or a gun doesn't make any sound, but picking up a gun and reloading does. ADS as well doesn't make any noise, unlike scoping in games like Counter-Strike. But one thing that I did want to highlight with audio is that the enemy team cannot hear anything that you do during the buy phase, and obviously you can't hear them. This is great if you accidentally fire a gun, you don't need to worry about the enemy team knowing where you are. And it's really important for heroes like Jet that have very noisy abilities. If you want to try and catch the enemy off guard somewhere by jumping on a stack of boxes to the side, definitely do it during the buy phase. Otherwise, it's more likely that the enemy team will hear you do it and be able to try and spot you out with your awfully attempted sneaky strategy. Recoil is a big area of Valorant that I think people are struggling with, especially those that don't necessarily have a background in other tactics shooters like Counter-Strike. Naturally, the more you spray, the more that your gun starts to veer off into the air, and the best players have learned how to control that by aiming the mouse down whilst you're spraying. The first five to six shots are predetermined based on whatever gun that you're running. They have determined patterns, but after a while, they'll start doing like I'm showing you on screen by moving to the side in a really random way. But you can actually track this randomness by taking a look at the gun spread, specifically looking at the gun itself. You can see that it veers off left or right, and you can use that to lead your shots if you're paying attention enough. Granted, this is good to use in a practice range because you have unlimited ammo, but I can't tell you a specific situation where doing this has led to me getting kill in an actual game. I think it's just worth noting that the gun in your peripheral vision can give you a good indication of where it wants to sway. And whilst it's not necessarily going to be used all of the time, it might save you now and again and they could be really important rounds. If you are not comfortable with being able to control recoil from hip firing, ADS actually does show you the spread of where you're firing, allowing better control over the spray. With hip firing, where you're looking with a crosshair isn't where the bullets will hit once the spread starts coming in. You have to sort of look down and left a little bit to make sure that the bullets are going in the area that you want them to. But if you're aiming down sights, you always look to where the bullets are firing, allowing better control over a spray and a better idea on where your bullets are actually going. The downside to that is, of course, for most guns, you tend to fire a lot slower when you're aiming down the sights. So if you need to be more accurate and want to spray a little bit, I definitely recommend AD. Yes, it's just important to get an understanding where you should be hip firing, where you should be ADSing. But knowing the pros and cons of both of these types of firing will get you a long way. Now let's talk about actually planting onto sites, especially with the spike. There's a lot of movement abilities and ultimates within the game that actually allow you to do some pretty cool stuff specifically with Phoenix and Omen. If you are a Phoenix and you use your ultimate and run it back, you pick up a spike and get teleported back, you get teleported back with a spike. I think Misk has mentioned that previously in another Phoenix video. So this is a great way to retrieve the spike that's sort of stuck on a site that is guarded by four different people. You can come in, snatch it, die with the spike, and then get teleported back to your old version because you used your ultimate. Better yet, you can also do this with Omen, picking up the spike and using your ultimate from the shadows to teleport anywhere within the map. 
Here's a play that I actually wanted to highlight from a guy called Vac in a tournament that I casted last weekend. He picked up the spike, he only had like 15 seconds left to plant, planted it on A when all of the defending team were at B, and managed to keep the sight and get the bomb to go off, pretty much creating a play out of nothing. We've talked a lot about spraying and the inaccuracy that you get after firing for some time. Now I want to talk about movement inaccuracies and what causes them. It's fair to say that stuff like moving, forwards, backwards, strafing, whilst firing will make your gun incredibly inaccurate. You want to be shift walking or crouching or staying still to be as accurate as possible. Jumping also makes you inaccurate and if you're playing jet, floating also makes you inaccurate too. The only ability that allows full accuracy whilst moving, jumping or floating is Jet's Ultimate Bladestorm. If you jump up into the air and you fire a Bladestorm, you will still be 100% accurate to where you're firing. A lot of people don't think this ultimate is very good and I'd agree to an extent, but that's the one thing it is very good at. If you can click heads on the go, you'll be able to do a lot here. But I also wanted to mention ropes. Ropes are a new thing that's been added onto the split map and you are actually fully accurate on ropes when you're staying still. Of course, if you start moving up or down, that inaccuracy starts coming into play and you won't be able to hit anything. Speaking of ropes, a little tip that I had, if you want to be quiet when traveling on a rope, you need to walk up to it, press F to attach, and then shift whilst going up. If you jump onto the rope instead of walking up to it, you will make a noise. I've learned that the hard way, so hopefully some of you guys can make use of that. Next up, I wanted to talk about a few abilities that actually are quite intuitive in their design, specifically the Slow Orb from Sage, which is one of the strongest abilities in the game, and also Viper's Ultimate Viper's Pit, which is also very strong in its own right too. Stuff like Mollies have a set diameter and circumference with how much space that they take up. But the two abilities that I just mentioned for Sage and Viper actually mold into the space that they're thrown. For example, if I throw the slow orb in this open area, you can see how much space it takes up. But if I throw it down this narrow choke, you can see that it overextends to compensate with how tight this choke is. So this ability is better used in these sort of tighter chokes because they take up more space and it will overrun the complete area, making sure that it's all covered within the slow effect. Same with Viper's ultimate. If you could use it in a tight choke, it spreads much further along and you could probably do a lot more with it. There might be another few abilities that have the same kind of traits but from what I saw the molly abilities like Brimstone's Incendiary, Phoenix's Hot Hands and even Viper's Snakebite didn't mold into their environment they stayed roughly the same. Wall banging is a core of any game like Counter-Strike and of course Valorant. Because Valorant is very similar to 1.6 and Source with how it does its wall banging, it really goes to show that this is going to be a really important factor for the game going forward. So understanding what is wall bangable and what isn't is going to help you in the long run. Of course, every gun has a different level of how much wall penetration that it can do, but there are two main effects that you need to be looking out for. The first is this, which shows that a bullet is actually passed through this wall. You can generally guess because of the sound that it makes but also that the bullet goes through and you have cracks around it. But then you have walls like this one that make effects like this. The thing that gives it away really is the sound. If you have this sort of like cowboy ricochet sound effect happening, it means that the bullets that you're firing are not penetrating that wall. It might be because the wall isn't penetrable at all, but it might also be because your gun isn't strong enough to do that. Basically, pick up the Odin, spray down the wall, you will get kills. Everybody will hate you, but I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. If we've had some really good wall bangable spots in the future, we'll be sure to talk about them, but right now, it's just important to know what works and what doesn't. We highlighted this other one in a pro versus dev game, but you can actually throw abilities through the bind teleporters. Front grenades into hookah from A site is obviously going to get quite a few kills if you're playing rays, but then again, what doesn't get you kills at that point? But you can also fire through like Owl drones, boom bots, even recon bolts to find out intel. All of these can be used in really intuitive and interesting ways. Maybe not all of the time, but I'd definitely try and give it a go if you possibly can. One way smokes are a key aspect of Counter Strike, but they're not really in Valorant too much, unless you go about them in certain ways and with certain characters, specifically looking at Viper and Cypher. Both of these have deployable smokes that they can activate whenever they like but they require a little bit of setup beforehand. Using the cyber cage and poison clown and throwing them onto certain bits of terrain like I'm showing you on screen, it allows you to get angles where you can see the enemy team's feet, 
but most importantly, they cannot see you on the other side of it, making them quite strong. But being able to lay down a site with both of these characters is going to be super important if you plan on learning them. Knowing how you really want to string up everything to work in unison is going to be good. But adding one-way smokes into this lineup, I think it's going to be very beneficial unless Riot nerf it in some way that means it can't happen. Finally, I did want to mention real quick about movement. It works incredibly similar to Counter-Strike in a lot of ways. You bunny hop in the same fashion, you can jump strafe in the same fashion. Of course, you move faster when you have your knife out, but having different weapons out does affect the speed that you run at. If you're running with a normal assault rifle versus running with an operator or an Odin, you move a lot slower with the bigger heavy weapons than you do with the rifles. And that's everything I wanted to highlight of all of the need to know things that the game doesn't necessarily tell you. If you are previously experienced with games like Counter-Strike, some of the stuff in here may seem obvious or even second nature, but from what I've seen, there's a lot of people that are freshly coming to a new tactical shooter from games like Apex Legends, Overwatch, that may not have played a tactical shooter like this in the past. So you may know about some of these, but I'm pretty sure with how the game works or just some of the mechanics and nuances that you need to know, there's going to be stuff in here that you actually didn't pick up on. If you have other things that you want to highlight that I didn't mention that I need to know that the game doesn't necessarily explain to you very well, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, take care, we'll see you next time.